The Breadboard AT Mega 328P project involves creating a standalone in system programmable sensor based device by placing the MCU on a breadboard. For my device, I chose a 555 timer reader that reads the square wave of resistor capacitor pairs using a 555 timer, displaying the information on an OLED display. These resistor capacitor pairs can be swapped out to attain the desired values of the square wave. The parts of the project are shown on screen. Let's start at the heart of the project, the AT Mega 328P. With some basic external components, this MCU can function like the UNO by taking in code from the IDE. These components include a crystal oscillator to govern timing functions, a reset button with a pull-up resistor to restart the program, and the most essential component, the AVR Pocket Programmer. This handy device allows the IDE to upload the bootloader and flash code to the AT Mega by connecting the necessary communication and power pins with the help of the AVR breakout board. Finally, to make a circuit a true standalone device, a 9V battery is connected to a 5V regulator to power the project as the AT Mega cannot handle more than 5V. And with the skeleton of the project complete, more parts can be added. Next comes the 555 timer IC used extensively in last year's ICS20 course. This IC takes advantage of resistor capacitor timing to create a square wave which is then fed into a digital pin of the AT Mega and an external LED. An OLED display is then added to present the information of the square wave. This display is basically a much more modern and sleeker version of the LCD. To establish communication from the processor to the display, the I2C communication protocol is implemented to send and receive data in the form of messages through a clock and data pin. These messages contain the specified device address to deliver it to, a bit to signify if the AT Mega is reading or writing, and the actual data with confirmation bits. On the software side, libraries for I2C and the OLED display are included, and the I2C connection begins and the display is initialized. Custom functions help set up the text to display the words waiting in order for the processor to finish processing the square wave using the getData function. This function assigns variables of the square wave using pulse int long, which returns the number of microseconds that have passed by when the wave is low or high. Using these values in some arithmetic gives us the total time of the square wave, the duty cycle, and the frequency in hertz, which are then printed onto the display. If no change is detected in the wave in the period of the timeout value, the pulse int long function will return a zero and the timeout animation will trigger, involving a 555 timer chip bouncing around the screen, mimicking the infamous DVD bouncing logo. This is achieved by randomizing the location of the sprite and moving it diagonally in an infinite loop. To keep it in view, if statements compare its position to the edges of the screen, and if at the edge, the animation will start to move in the opposite direction. Originally, I had planned to use this animation to replace the waiting text using timer1 interrupts, however, something with the I2C communication clashed with the interrupts, so I was unable to achieve this. Overall, this project was a great refresher of everything we have covered so far in hardware and software by combining the two concepts on a breadboard.